Welcome to Physics Office Hours. My name is Eric. There was three things that I wanted to talk to you about. Three things that I kind of learned. They're they're harsh lessons in in the life of academia, and they're things that I also had to change my mind on after I talked to people in the community. Um, after I talked to experts and interviewed other graduate students and people who had graduated, to get the life perspective I needed, I had to reach out and talk to other people and eventually I ended up changing my mind about these three things specifically. Firstly, what's it mean to get a bachelor's of physics degree? Oh geez, I got bit by a mosquito. What should you be focusing while you're in school and how easy it is to find a job after? Secondly, uh, how important is the school that you go to versus the work that you do while you're there? And lastly, I want to talk to you about a work-life balance. These are things that we normally talk about over on my stream. I stream over at twitch.tv slash physicsoh. Currently right now, I'm taking the month of August 2021 off, a brief hiatus. But if you'd like to, you can go ahead and drop me a follow over there for when I do start going live again, or also just hop in the Discord to keep up with any announcements that are in the future. I actually wanted to piece together some of a more recent stream I did where we went over jobs and, and talked about these these things but when I actually went to go do it I realized that the my thoughts weren't very complete so I want to take a moment to, to outline my thoughts more completely with you and kind of revisit some of these older streams some of the more defining moments of when I actually heard really compelling arguments and needed to change my mind and the first one I want to talk to you about is the bachelor's degree in physics in the spring of 2018 I went to an APS meeting uh, in April, the April APS meeting, and I went to a talk about degrees in physics and finding careers afterwards. One of the main arguments of the speaker was that you don't have to go to graduate school. You can find a good job. And there was all these statistics about people finding jobs after they graduated and about what the jobs were in and where they were going and what they were doing. And for me, it was very compelling that you could just get a degree in physics in a bachelor's degree and then just go out in the world was your oyster because that was the way it was displayed. But after talking to many people in the community, I realized that that argument, that opinion, was not nearly as based as when I started talking to people. Take a look here. This is from a clip from a very recent stream where uh, we were talking about jobs and uh, the prospects of when you get a degree. And this is what one of my mods, NC, had to say regarding this specific topic. Uh, I realize that people usually give advice like that, also have had tenure or at least been searching for a job for like 10 years. They're always just so far disconnected from the current state of things. And I, I found that to be true. Like, I, I, I found that to be true in that, like, when I started talking to people, I realized that that I had a very narrow view. I had just the purview of that one instance, that one anecdote where I had someone who had an agenda. And, and I get the agenda, and it's definitely true. There are people who are successful like that. But well, from talking to people, you really need to be focused if you're going to graduate with a bachelor's degree in physics, you need to be focused on internships, on application of that degree. You need to have some sort of specialty, whether or not it's coding, or I know some people that went into management after their bachelor's degree, that's perfectly fine as well, and they found great success in that. But going in without a plan, going in without research, going in without an internship, and just expecting to find a job is ultimately going to be dooming. You'll be in a sea of people who have done internships, who have done these research endeavors, who have learned how to code and learned how to code super well on a very desirable language. So these are just some things that when I originally started streaming, I did not have any idea about, and I had to change my priors after learning and talking with the community. The second thing is how important is your school name and the people that you know during your program. And at first I thought I, you know, I go to a large SUNY school, State University of New York, uh, which is a very, very good school and has a very good name. At the same time, it's not one of these, you know, not an Ivy League. It's not, um, it's not like in the top five schools in any specific area of physics. And for me, I just really wanted to believe that all of the stuff I did during my degree were the things that mattered. But the more I look at this and the more I look at people who work in the, you know, the top echelon of these, uh, of these research centers and who get hired as professors at universities, state universities and otherwise, I realized that they all have one thing in common and that was they're all from the same places. They're all from these top schools, these top five physics schools or these top five research institutions. And it's, it's a harsh reality to come to the conclusion that this stuff really matters. This was this is a clip from my interview with our good friend and moderator Justin Culp, who has been taking some time to really show me these things in a new light. So here we go. 
and so we we we've, we've spoken privately about this before but there's definitely like i've come to realize that the you know that the on paper it looks different and like what you were saying you know after that was that like that how does your school stack up in this field you know does your school study this how does it stack up in this field like <clears throat> it they're, like each school kind of has like a outer reputation that matters broadly but they also have like an inward in the community reputation that matters more um mm -hmm. and it's the um you know so like you might know uh, like there might be a school that's smaller that's known for its GR program or something like that that like is not going to get national acclaim and won't show up to everybody who's in the registrations office you know somewhere but like if you're in the group if you're in the community of GR you just know this school you know the name of it you know so like even like Cornell is a big condensed matter school but like not a lot of people know that if you're outside the community you know you have to kind of like be in the community of physicists to know that Cornell is a huge condensed matter school has a huge department with many like of the top condensed matter physicist you know you and i've had many conversations and i think you've kind of changed my mind about the importance of of where you go and what you do um if you have these like sort of uh if your goal is to have like to be amongst the t the, the top you know yeah i mean i not to to beat this topic to death but just to summarize so it doesn't seem like i'm a rambling glasses adjusting like nerd <laughs> it's, it's uh, <laughs> like a conceited nerd or something it was uh it's just, uh, I guess, you know, I realized very quickly, and I wish it would have happened even quicker, that, uh, 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 you know, you, I, there's an aspect of the sociology of, get, of higher education that I wasn't being exposed to, um, and now I'm probably overly... <laughs> overly concerned about. And, uh, <laughs> sure yeah i just i just wish i would have been more aware of it and i hopefully yeah. if any message gets out it's that so yeah anyway it's you know now here i'll take the time to preface to say that this is of course these are all anecdotes and that in order to move through this on your own for your own line of thinking you'll have to take the time to work through these thoughts yourself to come to your own conclusions i am of course just giving you more anecdotes and more ideas for you to add to your idea bank and for you to consider and then you know adjust your priors based on what you know the last thing i want to talk about is the work-life balance i find that Firstly, as a former chef, uh, my work-life balance has never really been good. <laughs> when I was in a kitchen, I was working 72, sometimes 80 hours a week, working between multiple kitchens, trying to keep them afloat, trying to work with the, uh, the staff, the cooks, the servers, the owners in both restaurants to make sure that both ran fluently and well while I was or was not there. Um, and then when I went to school, I was still working full time while going to school. So there was this, there's never really been a good work life balance. And one of the things that I always see on, um, on, you know, academic Twitter or social media in general is that you need to find, you know, there's a lot of very aggressive people who tell you it's okay to take the nine to five job. It's okay to tell everybody you're not going to do it. It's okay to say, I only work this much. And I do find that for a lot of people that is okay. I have been in this situation where I've worked a lot more than is required of me. And I would not put that on anybody else. That is my own personal decision and I do not choose to place on anyone else. However, I do have a caution about that work-life balance. There is something to say about the time that you put into your work. The time that you put into your work is proportional to how much information, how much knowledge you're going to gain. It's a lot trickier to balance than to say, I want to work like a normal individual. I want to work like the amount I'm being compensated for. I want to work a certain way, given the fact that when you get to the end of your PhD program, that work will ultimately be the only thing that's going to be driving how much you know and how much you understand about your field, your project, your understanding. Here's an interesting take from the brilliant Olivia Lanes, who I had on the stream about a month ago. Um, is there anything that hit you like that hard that was like just an absolute surprise about graduate school? Um, I think what surprised me most about graduate school is just like how hard it was and how like life consuming it was. And I think, you know, people try to tell you and people try to warn you maybe um not a lot of people told me because i don't know i wasn't on the internet as much as i am now i guess i wasn't like part of like <laughs> academic twitter which talks about how terrible graduate school is every single day but i think the most surprising thing is just like realizing that it has to be the main focus of your life i think 
um, which sucks at yeah. some at some level, right? Because you want to be able to do other things. And for the first couple of years, I was one of those people who was like, I'm going to have, you know, really good work life balance. I'm going to go home at six o'clock. Um, I'm not going to, you know, feel guilty for not working on the weekends. And realistically, that didn't get me very far, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I wasn't writing papers or doing experiments as fast as the other people in my program and as fast as I needed to be. So I think the most surprising thing for me is that the advice that people like to give about maintaining a good work-life balance is not really how it is. It's a little bit, you know, I would say rosy colored. Some days, yeah. some weeks, some months, and even like my whole last year, I would say there was no work-life balance. It was right. just work. <laughs> yeah. And that sucked, but I don't regret it. You know, I put in that work up front to get a job that I like and that I'm, uh, you know, really passionate about. But I, I made other sacrifices um, along the way. And again, while I think that it's possible to get through your PhD program, having a nice, healthy, balanced uh, work life relationship, I do feel that the people who do not will have an edge. So that is to say that you'll have to make some choices. You'll have to make some sacrifice. So the way I see it, there's a few possibilities. There's either, you know, work long, hard, ridiculous hours, and you know, have some of that be really good work time and some of that be really not so good work time. And that's a lot of what I have right now. Um, another, other people really like to focus and just work a solid, strong eight hours a day and that's all. And I think that's fantastic. But ultimately, at some point, you have to get the work done. You have to compete with other people. And this mentality that you have to take care of yourself can be very helpful, but at the same time, you do need to realize that this is a very competitive and fierce field and that you need to make sure that you balance that by putting in the hours of good work as well. Now, this is all just to say what your own personal decisions are when it comes to a work-life balance. This does not have anything to do with what your advisor or your classmates, your peers, your lab mates, your group mates expect of you. What they expect of you and what you expect of yourselves should wholeheartedly be different. You should decide on what you expect of yourself and make sure that you stand up for that, regardless of what anybody else tells you. And I think that's the most important takeaway from the work-life balance is whatever you decide is a healthy work-life balance relationship for you. you need to stick to your guns on that regardless of what your advisor and your lab mates and group mates say. Now again, I've come from a very harsh, unforgiving work environment where people were constantly at each other's throats. I have a bit of a biased opinion here. It is to just be taken as an anecdote, as more information to add to your thought banks. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful. I had originally wanted to sit down and kind of piece together some, some of my old stream, but ultimately I just really wanted to hash out these thoughts with you in a more formal way, and this is kind of new for me. So make sure you let me know what you think of it in the comments below. Again, I stream over on twitch.tv slash physicsoh, usually on Wednesdays and Sundays. We're going to start bringing that back again in September. Um, but in the meantime, you can hop into the Discord. All that link is down in the description below. And hopefully, I'll see you there.